You guys gonna do the same shit? Look at these motherfuckers. That big ass spider right there. Hell no, son. Get off the trip. Check it out. Uh, we went to the drop in Vista. He just had a few questions about the concrete right there at the ridge ends. Um, he wanted us to add some concrete, but after looking at it, he likes it better instead of being a big ball. He says it looks more clean, so good to go on there. Um, I had my guy show up anyways to walk the roof uh, just to be sure that everything's 100% okay, even though I know it's 100% okay. We got to double, triple check it as always. Um, yeah, so we're done there. I'm low on gas. As you can see, got 111 miles left. And we got to shoot to San Diego. So I got to stop here off Sycamore to get some gas. It's probably one of the cheaper. If I go to Costco, probably be cheaper. But Costco is literally that way. And I got to go that way towards San Diego. So, yeah, I'm not going to backtrack. And I'm all the backside of Vista to go over to San Diego. I'm supposed to be there at 8.30, but... 811 as you can see so whatever i already called him let him know um but yeah so we're gonna shoot to san diego um go give that guy a bid we might stop at san marcos first um we're supposed to be that nine so we'll, we'll figure it out but yeah it's a journey all right guys check it out came here to give a bid on a new shingle roof for stars you can kind of tell the granules are falling off on these shingles here. There's some cracking right here. As you can see, this crack, no bueno. Shingles are still stuck, but a little bit of pressure, these will lift up. You can tell the fibers are kind of going, coming off right here. And then right here, it's kind of lifting. Bad sign. Uh, there's no more ridge. It's completely gone. And you can tell they used staples when they did this roof a while ago. It's no longer good. This is what's left of the ridge. Right there. This all is gone. Definitely potential leaking here. Um, their cricket right here is where two roofs meet. Uh, she explained to me that there was a leak in here. So I gotta be careful walking through. Probably has to be built up a little bit more in the center. So the water kind of flows that way and flows that way. It goes down the gutter and kind of flows down the roof. Um, you can kind of tell right here, right there, she was going bad. They did put a piece of metal, which is good. You can tell there's a repair down there. Um, the shingles are breaking right here. But yeah, let's go ahead. And you can see all this cracking going on in these shingles. It's just old wear and tear. Flashings are lifting right there at the edge. Come up. Same thing with the ridge along this whole side. The repair was done here with the mastic. Right there, there's no caulking on the pipe. No caulking, no caulking. Repair, no caulking, and no caulking. And another makeshift repair there. And then no caulking on that flashing, and then that's a T-top. I don't know if there was a tree here. You can kind of see the darkness kind of flow down. Could have been a tree, they probably cut it down. And there was some leaking on the eaves, she says, so we gotta be careful walking down this to be safe. As you can kind of see right there, the metal that they put is hanging over. That's fine. Um, it shouldn't be hanging over that much. It should be done the right way. We just put a bunch of cocking on it. Of course, just like kind of like right there. So yeah. And then, as you can tell, we just gotta make sure it's everything's good. The roof tool is coming up. As you can tell, tin shingles not supposed to be like that. Look at that. Water can get right up in there. So all this has to come off, brand new tin shingles, brand new metal, brand new everything, which is normally what we do. And then we'll just kind of 
fix all this, repaint it, recock it. All this comes off down the bare wood. All this metal. And you guys do a whole re-roof. Oh yeah. You see that metal right there? Let's see a closer look. That's just roof to wall that they put on to go over it. Probably like a lipstick fix. Supposed to be 10 shingles like that. Every line of shingle is supposed to be 10 shingle, shingle, 10 shingle, shingle, 10 shingle, shingle, 10 shingle, all the way up to get past that. And then 10 shingles right here as well, if you want. But it's preferred to put 10 shingles there as well. So the water just flows right off. And then the drip metal that it gets replaced brand new. And you can tell they didn't put any starter on the edge here. And then another issue they had was these flat roofs. Um, this is kind of right there on the edge of where the pitch is. So a two and 12 or inch, one and a half and 12 is the pitch. This has to be torqued. So all these shingles have to come off. She did have leaking. So what happens here is when it rains, the water kind of just backflows under the shingles. And since it's nailed, they all leak. So they've had leaking here, here, and this one right here down on the side. This right here is really nice inside. It's all open beam with treated wood. Looks beautiful. So this would be a torch system here. Three ply base, smooth granulated. Another three ply base, smooth granulated. We might have to do, depending, we might have to kind of build it up a little bit so it flows on this one. But base, smooth granulated as well. Shingles come off to bare wood. It's fully replaced. Right here. We might have to, because it looks like it may be running backwards. Oh, look again here. They just put roof to wall or, oh, that's where, this piece right here is a tile pen. That's for tile right there. And they just kind of hit it down, put mastic and put it down. No bueno, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno. And you can tell they put nails here. No bueno. You can see everything's kind of lifting up here. As you can kind of tell, this is all lifting up. So that's not all good. You, all the screws are exposed. No good. So yeah, this has to come off right here. It looks like it, they kind of built it. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a wave going down that way right there in that corner. But I'm guessing they just put whatever towel pen under there, they put under there. So who knows until it comes off. Shingles are misplaced over there. You can see the black See these black lines right here? That's just where the shingle overlays and they just kind of slapped it on. Three different colors. One, two, three, actually four. These are all different colors of shingles. Taken off, put torch one color, good to go. Now when you put your torch, you, when you tear it off, your torch goes about 18 inches above up the roof. And then you put your felt on top of that, your synthetic 30, and put it on there. And you're good to go. Satellite dishes for everybody that doesn't know, do not put them on your roof. Call your company, DirecTV, whoever you have, put it on your facial board so it does not increase any roof penetrations or screws. Just put it on your facial board. They can just clip it a lot easier, a lot safer for you. Flashing's messed up, of course. There's no caulking here. Everything's lifting up, so no bueno, but yeah. That's pretty much the roof, what I look at. Um, everything gets replaced, all these flashings, drip metal, cricket, flashings on the chimney, which is considered roof to wall, tin shingles, and saddle. Um, the solar tubes, we keep the same metal, unless they wanna just fix the whole thing or take them out, change those. New flashings here. Um, over there, we put, we run the torch up the wall and put half by five or half by three. Here goes 10 shingles, here goes 10 shingles. Torch, torch, torch. And those are all three ply. Um, ridge gets replaced, of course, because everything's going brand new. Uh, we do use synthetic felt. The 30 by Owens Corning, we are preferred contractor. For some of you don't know, we do that. Um, but yeah, so you put ice and water shield down on the eaves right here. You don't have to put it going up. There is no valley. Here, so your ice water shield doesn't need to go in the valley, so that's good. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna take this off. Three ply torch goes here as well. 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'm doing this on my phone, not my GoPro. So yeah, feel free to drop any comments. If you guys have any questions, you guys can give us a call, schedule an appointment to come check it out. And yeah, so let's go talk to the customer, talk about it. And so as you guys kind of saw there, we're here in San Marcos giving a roofing bid. I kind of went over um, everything that kind of you have to look at when you go up on a roof. Oh, what's going to go left? When you go up on a roof or what you expect from your contractor uh, when they go and give you a bid for your roof and what to expect and what to hear. Um, the only thing I didn't kind of cover there is ventilation. Uh, there's supposed to be one O'Hagan per 300 square feet of attic space. So that doesn't mean your eaves or your overhang. Now your eaves are to your left um, and your overhang is what's on the bottom of your roof that comes out from your stucco. That is not considered attic space and that is not considered proper ventilation for an attic. So you do not measure that when you calculate your proper ventilation per O'Hagan. Um, so something like the roof that I just looked at right now is probably, I think it was like 20... Four, no, 23 squares of roof, but it's about 20 squares of actual attic space, or 19 squares of actual attic space, so that's 1,900. So you divide that by 300, and you should get approximately about, I want to say, 15 O'Hagan, somewhere around there. I could, the math could not be mathing right now, um, but that's the proper amount that should be there. Um, and you have to stagger those high high and low. So when the breeze comes in down low, it kind of shoots the hot air up high because heat rises. So that's one thing to look out for um, when giving a bid or uh, getting a bid or if you're a roofing contractor, that's one thing you should know. Uh, it's just everything has to be to code nowadays and per Owens Corning, our manufacturer that we use. Uh, we do everything to code so the customer gets the 100% guaranteed warranty through us and through Owens Corning. All right, guys, we got to head to San Diego. Um, this is where we're at. We're going to the bridge doing a little bit of construction right here. So, yeah, we'll see you in San Diego. I don't know what's over there. Um, I know that it's a flat roof. They added some stuff to the roof, and they got a leak. So I'll go ahead and give you kind of a breakdown of how I would bid it and what's going on over there and go that way all right guys see you in San Diego So check it out, we're here in Solana Beach, Pacific Beach. The customer has a leak coming on the inside at this corner right here. So these leaks, all this water flows down and flows this way. This comes up. You can tell there's water, remnants of water right here. But let's check this out. Look at this. All this is open. Exposed nail all the way down. Hole there. Crack stucco here. You can tell the Z bar goes up to about right here. But look, all the water is entering right here and like that. So this has to be completely, I want to say, redone the right way. Flows down here. It's not even stuck. You can tell. Flows off. Look, even just comes right up. Probably even nail it. Leak number one. That's the issue there. Always your tin shingles should go above here. If you have to buy bigger tin shingles, buy bigger tin shingles. There's no hurt of doing the job 100% correct. Remember that. So first leak. Then I'll throw the picture up of the original leak. Now let's go back here. There is some leaking on this area right here along the drip edge. So, so we'll see how it comes up right here. Water enters there. 
Oh yeah, water that's, water rolls right under there. All of this. There. This looks good. Here. Oh yeah, right here too. Oh no, look, everything looks good here. You wanna check it all. Oh yeah. Right here as well. You can tell. It's rusting actually. There. Looks good. A little bit there. Or else. You can kind of tell by the drip metal discoloration. You see this like brownish color. Here. Look at that. It just pops off. Here. Let's see. This is like this ponding right here. There is a little bit of a slump that kind of goes down. So we could build a sub, fold a half piece, fold piece of smooth right here in the middle, put another piece of smooth on top of that, and then put granulated so it'll flow. Um, everything kind of flows this way out. So that would kind of be the idea for that. Check again over here. This all looks good. Looks good. Looks good, looks good. Make sure these aren't screwed in. Good. Perfect. When they do the roof, you're supposed to put mastic cock in here. This should be fine. But we always put it around here as well. Never to be too safe and sorry. Especially when you want to guarantee all your work. And look, right here. Water can get in right there, for sure. So we'll redo all those. Check all these pipes as well. Gotta check all these, looks good. And then we'll check one other place. You wanna make sure all this is done right, look. To open this is supposed to close that and nail it to that. It's done right. Okay, well at least this side was done right. We should have put this run down to about right here and curved it that way so you get all this coverage. So essentially what we're gonna do is maintenance do all these pipes mastic caulking all these pipes here um do the edge that's fine do this piece right here fix the water flow do the edge from here my guess is probably do the whole thing to make sure it's 100 percent because we're not going to do this piece like from here to there leave that we're going to do the whole thing make it 100 percent guaranteed leak one uh we got this has to come come completely off this is just horrible Put brand new tin shingles, brand new shingles here. Put a new piece of torch right down there because you can kind of tell the discoloration right here, from right here, how it looks brown. The water flows all the way down that way off the roof and you can kind of tell it flows that way and goes to right under there and it should flow. Everything kind of flows to this general area and probably flows off all right there. So this has to get fixed for sure because we can see the felt. Tin shingles need to go higher. Um, and then there is a leak up top up here fix that as well this piece looks okay um looks all right everything looks good saddle done good tin shingles done good see this is done good i don't know why they just skipped out over there well try to cut corners get done faster but anyways so yeah so that's pretty much about it let's head in the truck and get out of here so as you guys so all there, I kind of just went over what the issues were, how to fix it, and kind of how to diagnose it. Um, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, you just got to be honest with the customer. Let him know what you're going to do, what he should expect, um, what your opinion is, and how you think things should get done. So he knows. The more they know, uh, the more they feel comfortable with you. So that's always a good sign. And then you go from there. So we're going to send him the bid. Um, he sounds like he's ready to rock and roll. Um, so yeah. We're done with this one. Uh, we might go to Ranch Penasquitos, check on the guys. They got a towel job rolling. 
So we're gonna make sure that's watertight and go from there. But yeah, it's, it's a good day. It's 10.30, I already looked at three jobs. So, you know, the day is rolling good. I'll probably go get lunch in a little bit. Gotta call the jefe and yeah. So let's get to it, let's get back on the road.